Uh, I'm ZX, I lead Crypto Econ Lab at PL, and today we'll be talking about uh, Fuel Plus Crypto Economics. Here's the uh, brief agenda for today. We we'll talk about uh, the Fuel Plus mission, uh, more so like just a recount on like when we first set it out, what, what we were thinking, and then what are some of the uh, goals they want to achieve. Right? And then next, I'm going to make a claim. I think right now, Fuel Plus is actually a necessity. I'm very glad I'm hosting this event. Now we can align everyone in the ecosystem. And then I'm going to briefly talk about um, um, uh, some of the bottleneck that I see. I think like we heard from many speakers earlier that we talk about many different solutions that we're exploring, and then we definitely encourage more and more of that, right? And then lastly, about like what good really looks like. I think uh, we heard about people mentioning this in ecosystem, and I think like we just want to like make it clear, oh, why? Um, how are the different axes of growth? Right? How do we think about how can we go above and beyond and do something even better? And then lastly, Always shameless plug, we're going to host an event um, on Thursday. Crypto, a whole half of Crypto Econ Lab team will be here, and then many of our collaborators will be here as well. Uh, we're talking about our Crypto Econ Lab's vision and our events on Thursday, where we dive into more of these uh, topics. Cool. Uh, well, Fuel Plus mission, um, I feel like we may not need the reminder, but I feel like it's always good to just, just my version of it, or it could, there could be many versions. Um, well, it's really about... Um, this network of useful storage, right? How can we bring more client, more more growth, more adoption, more awareness into the Filecoin network, right? Transition us from like a pure resource-driven network um, to like, a, to adding like a layer of social trust. We really put this like power and leverage into the hands of clients. But then I think like a, a year or a year and a half uh, since then, right? Like then we asked ourselves this question, how many real, how many of the client really are leveraging this like great resource, right? And how can we as a community really bring in more people and really like kind of like um, put this like uh, incentive to good use? Right, and also just another reminder, right? It's not about whether we trust the clients or not, right? It's always about like, oh yeah, how much we really trust them, right? Trust is earned over time. It really depends on how much data cap and people are getting, right? And then lastly, it's um, and um, I think last point is also interesting too because when we are doing this kind of crypto um economic system, right, on the cryptography layer, it's software, right? Like you, you have a, you need to have very objective measure of like what can what you can prove, right? Like in the case of Filecoin, would be a proof of storage, but then the client demand could be very diverse, right? Like oh, I want this, I want that. Oh, there's like. X, Y, Z different requests. And how can you really enable more economic diversity? How can we encourage more experimentation and allow more robustness to emerge, right? Mm -hmm. So these are um, kind of like the mission and the vision as we're setting it up. I think like we have made lots of progress in the past year, but I think we can still do a lot more. And then now we're going to talk about uh, Filecoin is a necessity. A few plus is a necessity now. Um, I think there are two angles to it. One is on SP economics. Uh, I'm pretty sure, I think most people here, if you're SP, you know this like firsthand, and, but just to make sure we're on the same page, right? And then there's also, um, this, I will talk about the other element, which is on the network health angle, we, uh, we go through some chart. Well, um, well, disclaimer, hypothetical numbers, 100% wrong, but like, but the dynamic is not roughly the same, right? You get the right, the same dynamics, right? So um, hypothetically, right, like you have this SP, um, doing their nice CC, sealing away, like 0% um, fuel plus, your, their quality of just the power is the same as their raw byte, right? Um, but then you have this like hardware cost, right? You have this labor cost, it's all in dollar, inflation is off the chart, everything's very expensive, right? Like it's, let's say it costs you about $100 to get to like one terabyte. We're talking about unit economics, right? And then like your expected return, I can do the math, this projection, there's lots of tools out there. Um, all right, I'm making about five file coin over the course of a year, right? And then like, oh, I also need the collateral. All right, fine, fine, fine. Let's just write it off, right? Like capital cost, put a percentage on it, simplify the math. All right, one file coin of collateral cost. So what we're then looking at, the net profit really is about at the current price. Um, I don't know what the price is now, but roughly, like in recent uh, uh, days or weeks, you actually end up losing money. Right? Like you might be losing money depending on, again, right? It depends on the number. This number could be entirely wrong, right? If you, if you can, like if you're like a first row is way lower, then you're still profitable, right? But given that assumption, it's times are hard, right? And then, uh, okay, let's say uh, hypothetically, all your storage is in Fuel Plus, right? Like 100%, right? Now your quality just a power is your, it's a 10X, the raw by power, right? So you, you can, you're expecting to earn maybe like 50 foul coin over the course of a year. All right, a capital, a collateral again, write it off. All right, actually you can still be profitable. Right, this is the dynamics here. It's like because of the mar recent market action and all this like uh, global macro, 
um, the token price has gone down a lot, right? Like, um, and you when you when you um, get your revenue from the protocol, it's in Filecoin, right? When you mark to market, it's actually way lower. But you have a fixed uh, kind of fiat called expense in your hardware and your labor, right? Like when, and then when you map it to the uh, power, right? Like um, when you have more Filecoin Plus, essentially you're diluting the proportion of like hardware costs in your cost structure. And that's why from this perspective, uh, when, when, when it's good times, right? Falcon buys this at a different stage. If you're, oh, not an issue, right? But right now it's actually, depending on your cost structure, it could become a necessity. And then this is like uh, a chart from the calculator, right? Like you actually see like, even those assumptions, like you might be, you might be in a, uh, it's actually a pretty difficult time for many of our SPs. And then the other angle is network health. Um, this is an interesting chart. I always think of it as one of the leading indicator of the Falcon network, which is like, and the equivalent of this in Bitcoin would be this hash rate, right? This is ignoring all this like termination, like, um, or like faults and whatnot. I'm just looking at how many, how much a new sec, how many new sectors are being onboarded on the Falcon every single day, right? So uh, you start off, you have quite a few interesting moments here. This is like where hyperdrive was, so like people are adding a lot. But then, like they hit a the bottleneck, they couldn't go out further. Right, the hyperdrive came about. Okay, like there's a dip, preparing for the upgrade, and then boom, right here we go. Right, and then keep on going higher and higher. Even though um, on the FIB level, I think you can go up to like one exabyte of onboarding every single day. Thanks to our amazing engineers. But like um, more stuff happened, right? Like so, then like we have bad news hitting ecosystem across the board. Then you have the onboarding started coming down, right? But then like didn't. Um, and then like this, I think we have introduced one of the other upgrades. And then like in recent uh, month, right, like before this whole like global macro downtrend, you actually see this um, kind of like onboarding rate increasing. And then like times are hard again, right? So we actually see like a kind of like a slight decline in the more recent weeks. Um, so as people onboard more storage, they also like lock more Filecoin as well and create more demand in the, in the pledge collateral. And then this is also like people are kind of like swapping like fiat resources, right? It's like this like hash rate essentially, right? You're putting in more hardware, dedicating that to the Filecoin ecosystem. And big thank you, big shout out to our SPs. You guys are amazing. I think we're really fortunate to have you in our ecosystem. Um, and then there's something, on top of that, there's something else, right? So we're just looking at the net growth, right? On top of that, there's also um, expiration, right? Like we also look researching this at Crypto Econ Lab. So this is actually a chart on all the schedule expiration going forward. Um, so like this is basically looking at the chain data. You say, okay, on this particular day in the future, how much potential schedule um, expiration are we expecting, right? So you have this inflow and outflow, inflow of like power, but then you also have outflow through like expiration and all the other stuff. But let's just look at expiration for now, right? Then you have this like, um, well, good news is like we see a lot more uh, SPs extending their sectors, which is great, um, thank you. And then like, um, you actually see like there's, you see this trend of like, if you're more closer to where we are now, you have a bigger proportion being extended and then like going forward, people, ah, I will make this decision later, you know, like, so like let's not extend and then until we are coming closer to the deadline, right? Um, but you, uh, with this chart though, you'd also have like potential um, collateral that might be freed up um, from, from the expiration, right? So you actually have this inflow of token, but also outflow of token as well, right? And then this uh, dashboard here goes into the more details and whole breakdown of like the inflow and outflow. Right, and you um, so the bright yellow line here. So the yellow line here is uh, the bar here is the lock collateral from initial pledge. Right, like we, we saw like earlier on, onboarding was high. People are very bullish. Lots of inflow of the tokens. Right, and then like expiration. If you, uh, let's see if I can go back. I can't go back. Uh, there's when expiration start hitting. Right, you see the peak. Right, then you see this like yellow bar going to negative. Right, if you're above the x axis, it means that you are. Uh, you are adding onto the lock file coin, but below meaning that you are really getting released from the lock file coin, right? So you see this like dip. And then, good news, I think like lots of things happen. I think thanks to work with lots of people, I think some of you guys are sitting in this room today, right? Like you see this like chart going back up again, right? You see like the lock file coin becoming positive again. And that is the adoption of U plus, right? You see this amazing growth uh, since the beginning of the program, very proud of the work that we have done. Right, we, are, we are looking at about like one petabyte of uh, Fuel Plus data in raw byte uh, every single day, right? So that's why Fuel Plus from a network health angle is also super valuable now, uh, both from like a supply and demand uh, forces, but also in terms of onboarding more uh, um, clients and users into our ecosystem. 
I think running short on time gonna be a bit quicker. So then we talk about some of these bottlenecks. I think like you guys like know it better than I do, but I'm just like kind of like putting it all here so that when you're watching this video, we're all on the same page, right? Like client acquisition, how can we get more client, right? Like BD is tough. And then like there's also regulation compliance. But I think the, the positive thing is this, right? We have many teams in our ecosystem really passionate about doing this. And it's really like heartwarming and also very really like um, excited for me to see like all the, many of SPs, they do have a BD team, right? It's kind of unheard of in all of Web3. We should talk about that more, right? In the whole Web3 ecosystem, right? And then like, um, and also like, how do we, so, and then we think a bit more meta, right? How can we really in increase this throughput, right? We have everybody's doing this and how can we get even more people to onboard more clients? Right, that's why I think the talk uh, from uh, CB just now on big data exchange is very interesting, right? And then there's and, uh, the client will care about regulation compliance, and, and Alex talk about that as well, right? Like, but what if let's just start simple, right? I just want public data. Uh, don't tell me if all these regulation. Like, let's just find the code, the, the safest data to store, and let's make sure we know where they are stored. We can index them, we can find them, and then we can go from there, right? And then. Then having, and when we go to like storing data, there's also preparation and transfer, right? You need to be processed in the right format. Oh, a pain in the ass. <laughs> and then data needs to be sent. And then like, and there's also, but the good news is many teams know how to do this, right? We have a very big ecosystem, right? Just people may not know this is a bottleneck. They may not know this is what we need. And then now the way is how can we really like kind of like uh, raise a clarion call and really bring more people to actually do this, right? Like, and then potentially creating a business around for so that all these teams can be formed and then like it can be more sustainable. And also few plus governance, like we talk a lot about this, right? Like it should be really be abundant. How can we streamline the process? How can we do analytics more efficiently and effectively? David's talk was great as well. Um, and then the last bit is this, right? We do, we now we have 80 petabyte of few plus on the network. It's, it's huge. But I feel like outside of our ecosystem, like we need, we need more awareness, we need more buzz, right? Like, do we, and then even we ask ourselves, hey, do I really know who are these clients and what are these data, where are they stored? Right, like, can we have a gallery? I always want a gallery, like been talking about this since like the beginning of Field Plus. Uh, maybe we should get teams to build that too, right? And then how do we really generate more buzz and attention around all the amazing work that we are doing, right? Like if 80 petabyte, it's like, you can put maybe like 10 Web3 in it, right? Like, so it's actually, Huge, right? Let's make sure we have more visibility and attention in our ecosystem. All right, running short on time, but what good looks like, right? We do one per by a day, uh, push the envelope, why not five, why not 10, right? Like, uh, and then like get more people involved, uh, more, if there, I think we talk about all this, like um, all this bottleneck. And then like, I think given where we are, that's my personal take, right? Public data is like, you get more awareness and also like more utility, potentially better than, um, more valuable than a like, private data. Right, retrievable content, right? I think we, I think we remember in the early days of Field Plus, we talk about, oh, how can we set up a governance principle? I was like, oh, maybe let's just make it simple, public and retrievable. If you don't meet this criteria, you're out, right? But again, right, depend, that's my take, right? It depends on how the ecosystem evolves and how the governance process evolves. And also like longer term deals, more commitment is always better than like shorter term deals, right? It's less useful uh, for clients. All right, um, so I don't get to talk more about the Crypto Econ Labs vision and what we are doing, but uh, we have a whole day dedicated to it. And I'll talk about it again tomorrow if you uh, feel Austin. But just come to our, uh, come to our event. Uh, you'll be on Thursday. Here's the registration. We go through many of the things that we're working on in our lab in greater details.